So you've decided to move to Florida, the beautiful place of sunshine. But there's some tremendous costs that can catch you blindsided if you don't know what you're looking for. And that's my job as a real estate agent and a YouTuber to give you the information you need to know if you're moving to Florida, the Gulf Coast, or anything like that. I got my cup of coffee, and in the next 15 minutes, I'm gonna give you the best lowdown possible of what to look for when you're buying in Florida, how not to get caught blindsided because you already have heard about some of the things you need to know, whether it's insurance or inspections or flood zones or roofs or anything like that, we're gonna talk about it. So let's get right to it. So Florida is a beautiful, beautiful place. I love living here. And there are some things though, like hurricanes, that you just gotta know about. Hurricanes, lightning strikes, tornadoes, flood zones, Random rainstorms like we're getting today. Look at hurricane force winds today. Just out of nowhere. Closed schools, just like a snow day. And, but instead it's water, wind, and uh, you know, possible tornado. I think the Mobile Causeway is overflowing right now. Florida is number one when it comes to hurricanes. I think we've had 127 named hurricanes. I think 37 were cat threes. Yeah, that's true. That is wild. But if you prepare yourself and you buy the right house and you know what to do when it comes to insurance, you can work your way around it. Hopefully, if you're buying, you've got a really good real estate agent that knows how to work their way through this, help you work your way through this. Don't just go hire the, the, the run-of-the-mill agent you got off Zillow. Make sure you actually interview them and talk to them and make sure they can talk this back to you, what I'm doing right now. So... Florida is an insurance game, point blank period. It is about getting the right property that can get you a good insurance policy. Knowing that it's up to date on its wind mitigation, has a good roof, it is a not really in a bad flood zone. A lot of waterfront properties are in a flood zone, but you've bought the right property that happens to be up on stilts or in a good spot. And it meets all the wind codes that are up to date. I have also made a video on just about everything you need to know about buying a beach house or buying a property or the properties you should never buy. Go and look at my videos in my real estate section on this YouTube channel and you will find everything there is to know about these properties. It's hard to do it all on a 15 minute video. And I'll try to link them in the description box. So here in the state of Florida, we have a last resort policy for insurance called Citizens. It is a state sponsored type insurance policy, hashtag not an agent for insurance. I'm just trying to give you the best information in my opinion. Um, and in the future, and if I think right now, if it's 700K or more, they force you to have flood insurance no matter what, whether you're in a flood zone or not. And it's gonna tear into all the way down to by I think 2026, all of them will have to have uh, flood insurance if you also have a citizen's policy, which is nuts. And I think a lot of the other insurance companies are gonna follow suit. If you're an insurance agent, comment down below. Just know that if you are buying in Florida, a lot of, there's a lot of water in Florida. And if you're along the coast or you're in those areas where they tend to flood an AE flood zone or greater, that you're gonna be forced to have flood insurance. Go to the FEMA flood map and type in your location and you'll see if you happen to be falling in that type of flood zone. Uh, also make sure you get an elevation certificate when you get your survey, and then you'll know for sure uh, where you lie when you talk to insurance agent. Also, the roof on your house that you're purchasing or you're selling is very important because insurance, is company, insurance company's been playing a lot of funny games with us when it comes to roofs. There for a while, if it was older than 15 years, they didn't care if it was a 50 year architectural or not that roof was too old to insure. And if you ha owned a house and you were approaching 15 years, a lot of times they would just drop you. It's crazy right now that the amount of uh, clients I have that just randomly had their insurance pre premium when it renewed go sky high. And if you escrow uh, your insurance policy, then you just all of a sudden saw your payment go up and you realize that they auto renewed it. And it got a lot of people this last month. And I think they're really preparing right now, as of today, um, that we're gonna have a bad hurricane season. So 
insurance companies are running for the hills and I think they're just pricing you out. They say, hey, we don't wanna drop you entirely. We're just gonna double your premium. Therefore, go find somebody else. That's what they're really doing. But I'll say this, insurance, <laughs> insurance is not coming down. It's just going to go up less, just like everything else. With inflation, we got numbers today. Inflation is still hot. Numbers are not going to go back to where they were. They're just going to go up slower. Like That is the most frustrating thing about real estate right now. When you go to do a, a home remodel, okay, guarantee you, you run over budget because things cost more now. The price of everything has gone up. So just factor in, if you are getting a property that you are having to, let's say it's an older house and you're having to bring it up to code, bring it up to modern everything, it's gonna be a lot more expensive. Your insurance on that flip or on that fixer upper is going to be more because a lot of the older houses don't have the hurricane clips, they got an older roof, some of the plumbing needs fixing, some of the wiring needs to be fixed up. Therefore, added costs on added costs. And just to get into the property, it's gonna be more expensive because the insurance companies are just gonna give you a hassle. It's gotta have a solid four point. Check my videos out on this. I've gone in detail about it. Make sure you got a solid four point. Make sure you got good windows. Make sure you got a fairly new roof. Make sure you have everything that the insurance company wants, um, even the storm shutters especially if you're close to the water, within two miles of the water, you need to have good windows. Hurricane uh, rated windows, 135, 155. Make sure you dive into that and research, research, research. Okay, Florida's known for its property tax and we don't have an income tax, so a lot of people like to retire here, but you also pay on the property tax. And especially if you're buying a new build property, do not get blindsided on the taxes the next year. Sometimes, most of the time, lots of times, the pro property tax on a new build is assessed off of it before it was built. And then that next year, your property tax goes straight up. Make sure you know about homestead exemption, research it, research it, research it, and try to cap that in that next year so they don't just keep raising it up. As the appraisals of these properties go up, just like in, in everywhere in Florida, We've had so many people move here that the price of the properties have gone sky high, right? They've gone up very fast. And also, property tax will follow it. I see the property, the tax assessor rolling around all the time in the neighborhood looking to see who he can raise the taxes on. So make sure you lock in homestead exemption. Call the homestead exemption office. Make sure they don't just jack your taxes up the next year. You wanna make sure you lock it in and cap it. And I think they can only move it up 3% a year after it's been under homestead exemption. But if you miss that deadline and you roll into the next one and then they reassess you, then you are gonna get hammered, theoretically. Don't hit me up on this, do your own research. So I wanna hammer the, the financial pitfalls of remodels and of houses. I touched it on it earlier, but when you're buying a house that you are gonna fix up and live in, especially on the beach. You need to make sure that one, the insurance, once you get done with it, is going to be manageable. Two, you gotta do all the renovation it takes to get it up to where the insurance companies will actually take you. Um, a lot of the older houses, they just weren't, they've had a lot of wear and tear on them on the beach. And if you're, you know, inwards, factor in new windows, factor in roof repair, factor in storm shutters, factor in hurricane clips, factor in any type of plumbing issues that you gotta fix, and factor in making sure your wiring and everything in your electrical system is up to date and solid. And if that cumulative amount of money takes you too much in your budget to where you can afford the insurance, you're gonna to have to ask this question. Do I own the property outright and just self-insure? And or do I do the bare minimum of what the mortgage company makes me have to have? Because if you have a mortgage, then they're gonna force you to have insurance. They're gonna make sure the house is insured and the contents, most likely. And that is what makes your insurance so expensive. Um, if you own it outright, you can take a lot of these policies and strip out contents and things like that and win and say, I only want 
you know, hazard or fire or things like that. If you're a wealthy person, well, sometimes self-insuring self-insuring is the way to go. And you're just factoring in, okay, roof's 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars. Premium's going to be 10 on the insurance. Two years, I could have just paid for the roof. That's up to you. I will say on the beach, and I will say some parts in Florida, you get random tornadoes that spin off. If, go check out that video where I had a listing and it got destroyed on a random tornado on the beach. It happened for real. $1.5 million house ripped to shreds on a random night. So if you're willing to do that, it's up to you. I've heard of houses burning down the night of closing. It's up to you. Um, but uh, you need to make that choice. Uh, Florida is a great place. Sometimes it's expensive to live in these places and a lot of people are willing to take it because it's an amazing place. And, you know, it's really up to you. You just got to factor in all these things I talked about and say, is this something I'm willing to do? If, I, if you own the house, you need to factor in, hey, I need to make, bring it to where it's got a solid four point. Roof, plumbing, electrical, AC. And then make sure that it has all the wind mitigation done to it. And then make sure you have the correct, you know, uh, elevation certificates and everything to give to the insurance company. And then say, okay, give me a good policy. And most likely you'll, you'll be able to do it. If you're looking at short-term rentals, okay, odds are if it's a second home, your insurance policy is going to go straight up. Because they do not want to insure these Airbnbs with all the throughput. People coming and going and the slip and fall claims and the partying and all that stuff. There's just more liability involved in it. And I think too, the last few houses I've owned in an LLC, a lot of insurance companies don't want to touch you. And it brings down the amount of carriers down to just a handful. Because they want that to be hooked to you and not an LLC. And I think that's the man coming after us also. So all these things you just gotta factor in. On the Airbnbs, make sure that when you purchase the property, you did your due diligence that you can actually have a short-term rental in that area. If there's an HOA, any city ordinances, county ordinances, anything like that, make sure you and your agent did the due diligence on the property to make sure you actually can have short-term rentals. I've done a lot of videos on this. Go watch those videos on Airbnb short-term rentals on this channel. In the last three years, there's been a lot of insurance companies just leaving the market. And I think they are gonna have even more. And yes, you see the news articles every once in a while saying more insurance companies are coming to Florida. And then right behind that, you say, oh, it's gonna be a really bad storm year. Do you really think they're gonna come in here and prices is just gonna go down? No. I think that they're gonna, it, it's a mess. The governor's gotta fix it. I've done many videos on this topic in detail. Go watch those about the problems of Florida uh, insurance. The governor doesn't understand it. The politicians don't care. And uh, it's left to the homeowners to try to figure this stuff out. 80% of all the properties on the beach are with a mortgage that has to have insurance. They gotta figure that, figure that out. All parts of the country have natural disasters. You have fires, you have mudslides, you have volcanic eruptions, you have all kinds of crazy stuff. Storms that, that with snow and hail and all kinds of weird stuff. So we all have things we gotta insure against. But the politicians have gotta figure this out, however they may, or you're just not gonna have housing and tourism and the sunshine and the water is Florida and it makes a lot of money. So it's not going anywhere anytime soon. So. I didn't want to have anybody blindsided by these things. You need to research these in depth, watch my videos on these topics, and you'll have a really good idea of what you need to look for and you won't be that blindsided. Research your real estate agent from top to bottom. And now with this new NAR settlement, like where you have to actually sign a buyer's agreement with agents to come July 21st um, before you even see a property, which is wild, NAR. Go watch that video. I talked about that in depth. But um, make sure you pick a good one. Don't just go to the buyer's agent because he's not going to tell you all these things because come July 21st, they're most likely going to be operating in the essence of their client, the seller. And if you think you're going to go straight toward them and just get a deal, well, good luck with that. I hope that works out. It's going to be rough for you. 
And uh, I know some agent is going to chime in the bottom with some, Oh no, I'm a great person. I'll never do that. Look. You gotta have a fiduciary look out for, for you and your interests, and just remember that. Don't get blindsided by that. Go read up on how the real estate agent market is changing. Thank your local politician. And comment down below if you've got anything to add to this. I wanted to make it as good as possible. I've thrown a lot of B-roll in with random tragedies that have happened and I have actually seen. And I'll see you guys later. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you happen to be buying real estate in Pensacola, Gulf Coast, Orange Beach to Destin, email down below. Email me and I'd be happy to help you. And uh, we can buy something cool. And I'll safeguard you from all these things. I'll see you later.